Hi, welcome to Hillcrest Sermons, Growing Together. Show us your heart's delight. My name is Tim. Uh, I am on the teaching team here at Hillcrest and love getting to unpack scripture with you all. You know, our heart, uh, well, let me back up a little bit. Every fall, we try to touch on shared direction, where we are going as a community, um, what that even just kind of looks like, not just kind of 10,000, 30,000 foot level, but over the next few years and strategically and tactically, what things are happening around here. And we try to touch on that um, every September, just make sure the whole community is informed on the same page together. And our, you know, our heart here at Hillcrest is we want to be talking about things that really matter. We want to be talking about aligning our lives with, uh, with truth. We want to be talking about what's the best way to live. And so today, kind of as we dive into all those different things, I just want to, I want to share from my heart, um, uh, if you have kids, if you have grandkids, you have nieces and nephews, if you're involved in Treasure Land 412, I need you to know this thing. I highly recommend you get magnetiles in <laughs> your home. I'm going to bring some magnetiles up here. Maybe you're like, Tim, what are you talking about? Let me demonstrate for you. These toys are played with at my house more than any other toy. Who's got magnetiles in their home? Yes? So these, and maybe you're like, these are little plastic. No, magnetiles did not pay me to do any of this. Um, They're plastic. They have magnets. And um, there is no toy in our house that has got played with more than these magnetiles. Uh, For years, I will come home, and there are magnetiles all over the living room floor, and then what ha- this, the magnetiles then become the land in which all the other creatures... See, there's a Siberian tiger in here with the magnetiles. Um, the, the land in which other, sometimes animals... Um, uh, lot, see, there's a lot of predators in here. Um, oftentimes the princesses are with the animals, sometimes cars, and sometimes, you know, at the same time, the cars and the princesses and the animals, you know, inhabit the same world together. But I'll come home, and it's, it's really common that I'll come home, and there are just magnetiles everywhere, and I'll, be, and, and I'll ask this question of my children. What are you building? And it, you never know. It could be a village. It could be, they could be city streets. It could be a fortress. It could be a castle. It could be like, a, I don't know, a, a, you know, a new nuclear power plant or a fast food chain. or There's all kinds of things that get built. But I'll, like over the years, you know, I'll, like... Nothing gets played with more. And what are you building? Because I think that the, the magic of the magnetile is that it's like this blank slate. You can make anything with it. And so uh, it could be a spaceship. Uh, it could be a zoo. And um, there are just all sorts of things. I wonder if I can do that. Nope, that doesn't work. Um, but the magnetile, they get played with all the time. But, you know, I was even just thinking about this morning. I was thinking about talking about shared direction. Where are we going as a church? Our lives. And, and I just thought about this question that I think is a simple and yet a valuable question to ask for every one of us. What are you building? I wonder, I wonder if in the quiet moments of our lives, it's not one of those questions that God whispers to every one of us. What are you building? I even think about, I think about the, mag, you know, I think there's all kinds of metaphors for life, magnetiles in life. Magnetiles, it is easier to tear down what someone else is building than build your own thing. It, you know, and oftentimes that's a form of entertainment, tearing down what your sister's building. It's not, I don't recommend it, but, but it's true in life as well, right? It's always easier to be a cynic in the back row of life with your arms crossed and knowing how to tear down what other folks are building. But I think ultimately the, God, the question that God asks each and every one of us is, what are you, what are you building? with your life. You know, he places us in this world with, you know, these passions, these talents, these experiences, this, 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 this incredible uh, creation he has placed us in, all this potential to unlock. And I believe God asks us, what are you, what are you building? What home are you making? What next generation are you investing in? What institutions and communities are you building up? What businesses are you starting? What nonprofits 
are you investing in? Like, what, do you, art, what works of art and beauty are you placing into the world? What are you building? What are you constructively adding to this world? God has given you these abilities, these talents, these passions, these days of your life. What, what are we building with it? I asked that question about my kids and magpiles. I think God asked this question to each one of us. And I think it's a question that God asks individually. I think it's a question that God asks community as well. What are we building? You know, when you look at Scripture, um, you see that God is building something. Uh, Jan just read this passage from the book of Ephesians. Um, and that was written, you know, 2,000 years ago. This author, Paul, he's a leader in the early Jesus movement. He's writing to this, uh, this community of Jesus followers in a town called Ephesus. It's in Turkey today. It was called Asia Minor back then, this pagan Greco-Roman city. And these people have begun following this Jewish Messiah there in this community. They gather together. And Paul's written them this letter. And, and I want us to hear with this, this what are you building question in our minds. I want you to listen to this language that Paul uses when he's speaking to these followers of Jesus. Paul, earlier in the letter, he's talked about how um, Jesus, the Messiah, reconciles people between um, themselves and God. He talks about how they've reconciled with one another, this ethnic reconciliation between Jews and Gentiles. And then he goes on to talk about what God is doing out of this reconciliation. And, and Paul says, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. And then listen to the metaphor that Paul uses. He says, You are built on the foundation of of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his Spirit. Paul says, God is building something. And what is the picture he uses building metaphor? What does he say God is building with us? What's the, what's the metaphor he uses? He's building a... Can anybody, can anybody, you saw it You just right in there? He's building a house, temple. He's building a temple. He says, You're, I'm building you to be a holy temple of the Lord. Um, and... Uh, this, it's this image that people, you know, I think in our day and age, we're not around temples a lot, but in, in, for uh, first century Jews and Gentiles, temples were, that was an image that they were familiar with. They were familiar with temples. For those in uh, Ephesus, the Artemisian, this famous temple would have been in this temple to Artemis. It was one of the largest temples in the, in the world. And for Jews who had uh, become followers of Jesus, they were familiar with the temple in Jerusalem. I think that here's the next slide. This, uh, the largest temple complex in the world. Like they, in this time and place, people knew temples. It was a category that was familiar with them. And when, you, when they thought about temples, what were some of the things that happened at a temple? I mean, one, they thought of it as like the dwelling place of the God. It was a place that you went and you encountered the deity. And you encountered the deity and you worshiped God there. It was a place of worship and, and of giving to God. You could call it sacrifice, but it was giving over to God. Temples were a place of learning, a place where people would go and they, they learn about God and learn how to walk with God. It was a place of community. You would go and meet together. Temples weren't a place you went uh, by yourself. You went and gathered with others there. But it was also, it, it, it uh, performed these larger functions as well. Temples were places where people could seek refuge if they were in danger. Temples were places of justice. Temples were places of generosity. The poor were meant to be cared for there. Temples were places of beauty. Some of the most beautiful architecture and art in these communities were at the temples. People had this concept of temple, a place of worship, encounter with God, a place of learning, a place of refuge, a place of justice, a place of generosity, a place of beauty. And then what Paul does, Paul says because of Jesus, God is no longer dealing with physical building. It's not about physical buildings anymore. He's doing something with a people, with human beings and living community. And he says to these followers of Jesus, you now are God's temple. All those things that used to happen in these physical locations now happen through human communities. You are God's temple. 
And I think fast forwarding 2,000 years to those of us gathered together in Bellingham, Washington, follow after, following after Jesus together, I think God says to us, we are God's temple. God is still building something. God is building things individually with our own lives. God is building something with us together, and he's calling us to participate. And, and you know, these, these Septembers, um, when we talk about shared direction, part of what we're doing is we're just talking about what, is, what do we sense God is building here? What do we sense God is calling us into? How are we participating with it? Because, because it, it, these things need to show up in really concrete, practical ways. Like they're both metaphors that operate at this 30,000 foot level, but they also need to show up. Like we believe in word made flesh. These things need to show up in the nitty gritty of our lives. And so we talk about how is this being lived out in the nitty gritty of our lives. And so that's what I want to do. I want to kind of take the rest of our time today and talk about how, what do we sense God is building? How are we cooperating and participating in that together at Hillcrest? What are we building? So the first, first thing I want to say about that is uh, there are some things that we're just kind of always building. Oh, we'll get to that in a second. Just back up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The, uh, the first, there's, a, uh, there's, a, there's some things that we're always building. Like we, you know, Hillcrest, love God, grow together, care for the world. This is what we're about. That's, and maybe, we'll, you know, maybe someday we'll change the verbiage. But the, the, key, the ideas behind that, that is what we're doing. We're loving God. We're, we're growing together. We're caring for the world. And there's ways that we express that. Sunday worship, Sunday teaching, small groups where people find community and spiritual formation, um, care for kids in Treasure Lane, care for youth in 412, um, partnership with Chi Alpha, our campus ministry, partnership with Hillcrest Kids, our outreach to families and kids in this area. Like these things, these aren't going anywhere. This is what God is building over the long haul. But then there's also things that we find um, that in, in specific seasons, we feel called to like, we need to lean into this right now. We need to build out that wing. Or, you know, if, if you, um, you, know, you own a home, there's things that we need to repaint that, you know, this kind of thing. Um, and so there's certain things that we think, hey, in this season, we need to push into this. And so every now and again, we, uh, the pastoral team, we listen to the congregation, we get together, we pray. We last did this in the winter of 2021 and just ask ourselves, hey, in this next season, what do we sense God is building? What do we need to put extra energy and thought um, and prayer into? And that's, I want to, I want to share some of that. You, these are things that if you've been around, you've heard about before. Um, but uh, if you're new, this will be new to you and hopefully exciting. And if you've been around, it'll be kind of check-ins on where these things are at. So we call this shared direction. And we have uh, this, now you can go to the next slide. There you go. That's exciting. Uh, we got these little trifolds to describe where these are at. Can I have some folks to jump up here and help me pass these out? Actually, not even help me. Just kind of do this for me because I'm going to be standing um, up there still. Can you pass those around? So um, maybe grab like kind of one per, one per household kind of thing. I think we printed, uh, yeah, we printed enough for um, about that uh, ratio. So pass those out. Raise your hand if you want one. What this is, uh, this is called our, our shared direction five-year plan. When you open it up, what you'll see is the nitty-gritty, the practical ministry initiatives that back in 2029, we set as goals. We said, hey, in this season, in this five-year season, we sense we need to be moving towards these things. We need to put extra prayer into these things. We need to put extra resources into these things. We need to lean into these things. And, um, and then there's a, you know, some of these haven't been started yet. Um, we're just part year into this five-year plan. Some of these are completed already, and some of these are in progress. And this morning, I just want to touch on some of the exciting ones that are in progress just to update us where we are at. So as those continue to go out, uh, I'm going to just kind of start talking. I'm going to start on the left. The left column is called Bases, and the top one, uh, the top one on there says Open a Hillcrest Church Internship Program. Next slide. There we go. Open number one. Open a Hillcrest Church. So this is something that we've sensed. Uh, we, like, we want to see, uh, for the good of Hillcrest, um, young leaders here being trained in ministry. And so we've been praying about this. Hannah Dreblo has been our staff person who's kind of taken the, uh, taken the lead on this. And I want to show you uh, the video they've uh, put together describing what this foundation's internship program is all about. So here we go.
What if God made you with a purpose and a plan? What if we could find deep and meaningful friendships? What if we saw our local community as our mission field? Foundations is a three-part program aimed at young adults looking to explore their identity and calling. Combining seminary level education with professional life coaching and hands-on ministry experience, we aim to equip and empower students as they step into the next chapter of their lives following Christ. In this year to come, explore the possibility of a life on mission. Discover your path in life as part of something bigger. Build friendships that last a lifetime. Are you ready to say yes to a transformative year? To say yes to partnering with Jesus? To say yes to discovering who you were always meant to be? To say yes to God's kingdom in Bellingham as it is in heaven? Apply today. So that is the Foundations Internship Program. There's an education component, a life mentoring component, and then like a practical ministry, you know, working in ministry component. And that has started like this weekend. Here's a picture of Hannah and our four interns. They're over in Montana right now. <coughs> We're partnering with Yellowstone Theological Institute. It's a theological school over in Montana to provide the education component of it. And this, so they actually start in Montana. So they're there right now getting oriented. They're going to be with us in the next couple weeks. In October, we'll bring them up front and pray for them. But they're going to be serving in worship and youth, um, in small groups and in missions. We're really excited uh, for foundations getting started. So this is the first year that that is kind of running in full. So that was the first thing I want to let you know about. The next thing I want to let you know, we're just going to jump down to number two there. It says, open new digital doorways for people to meet Jesus and enter into face-to-face -face Christian community. Um, you know, here, we believe a couple things. One, face-to-face, uh, -face, in-person Christian community is a non-negotiable. Like, we are meant to live in embodied community together. That is how God made us. That is, that is what we are about here at Hillcrest. Uh, we also believe that um, websites and social media, the digital world, is the new front porch of the church. And we want to have a welcoming front porch, one that's authentic, that's not, we're like, we know we're never going to be the coolest church in town, but we want to be authentic to who we are, welcoming. Just a couple of weeks ago, if you're here, we heard a baptism of a high school guy. He was sharing his uh, story of faith, and he talked about the role of TikTok in his, in his journey towards Jesus. And it's like, we want, to, we want more stories like that. We want to be part of that. So there's a couple things that are happening. One, um, you'll see two, what is it, 2A, establish a young adult media team. Um, we brought on Macy McMillan to run social media for us this year. That just started this fall. Just again, having a good front porch. And then 2B, reimagine and rebuild their Hillcrest Church website. That is happening as well. Um, Dave Green and Austin, I'm Streer, Stryer, I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, it, are they working on the website redesign? And so that'll be coming out in the next year as well. It's just having a good front porch for people um, to come into community. Oh, I don't, did I say, I think I skipped this really important part. There's all this, so pause. I forgot to say something that's really important. Um, so many things in my brain. Uh, the, the overarching, the whole overarching idea behind this five-year vision, we articulate it this way. because You see all this bridge and table language. The whole kind of overarching idea is building bridges and setting tables to nurture relationships with Jesus and his people for generations to come. Amen. So building bridges, setting tables to nurture relationships with Jesus and his people for generations to come. That's, that's why you see all this bridge and table language um, popping up. The whole I, thing that overarchs the whole five-year plan is how can we be outward focused, build bridges and set tables, invite people into an encounter with Jesus and his community. And so all these are different what does that look like? How do you do that? Um, so once again, Foundations Internship is part of that. Uh, digital Welcoming Front Porch is part of that. That is how these things all fit together. So let's see. I'm going to move. Let's move over to the center column. Bridges and tables, number two. Make it easier to find bridges into and places at the table within Christian community. For a while, we've said, hey, we need like some small group type experiences for people who are just asking questions about faith, exploring faith. One of the, one of the kind of, uh, you call it a curriculum, but like materials that have been developed that do a really good job guiding conversations around that is called Alpha. 
Alpha is essentially just a guided conversation for people who are learning about Jesus, asking questions about faith, creates a safe and open place to explore. Where does, where does Jesus fit into my life? Who is Jesus? And so we've been wanting to start that for a while. Alpha started last winter time for the first time here uh, in a while, and it's running again this fall. And we're really excited. It's setting tables where people can come and have safe conversations being introduced to Jesus. Uh, let's see, right underneath that one, number three, begin a ministry focused on the leading edge of the next generation, 20-somethings and young adults. This is something the pastoral team, we've been praying about this. We've had some great young adult, like 20-something small groups. I know Hannah and Michael ran one that was just overflowing with people uh, last fall. And now we've got three different ones uh, up and running uh, this fall that we're really excited about. And then kind of around, the, we've got these small groups and kind of the hub of the wheel in terms of 20-somethings is this ministry called Rooted. Um, that has been a good gathering place for people of that generation. And I wanted to just invite up one of the leaders of Rooted uh, just for you to meet this morning. So Lindsay, you want to come on up here and just share who you are, the vision of Rooted, and what is going on. Lindsay, and just, I know I've said this to you, but this is really an answer to prayer, um, the work that you've been leading. So here, you want to introduce yourself and, yeah, and just share absolutely. it here. Why don't you come up here where everybody can see you? I'll get okay. out of the way. Yeah. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Uh, my name is Lindsay. Um, like Tim just said, I am a part of the planning team for our Rooted Young Adult Ministry. Um, and it's so great to hear that this has been an answered prayer for Hillcrest. I can say confidently that we've also heard that from a lot of our young adults saying the exact same thing, that they were looking for spaces to meet people. And so it's been such a blessing to be a part of this ministry. Um, when we were beginning the process of planning something like this ministry, we just felt confident that um, there are a lot of things trying to capture the attention of young adults, uh, lots of things that are saying, this is what you can put your identity in, this is where you can put your trust, um, but we believe that Jesus is for our generation, and we believe that he is for our young adults and that he wants to use our generation to further expand his kingdom. Yeah. So we wanted to create a space for young adults to gather together, to meet each other, to share life with one another, to pray for each other, and push each other forward in sharing that kingdom. So Rooted is a ministry that meets once a month, and we just gather and do different activities together, and it's a great place to do exactly that. If you are interested in getting connected with Rooted, you can always look for me. I'm tall and easy to spot. <laughs> <laughs> or we also have our QR code here. That is for our uh, group chat. That's where we post announcements about each uh, meeting that we have. That's location, details, all that kind of thing. Um, you can also connect to any of the pastoral team. They'd be happy to get you connected. Um, they might just point you in my direction or in Grace's direction, but that's a great way to do that too. Or if you're on social media and you see us on Instagram, you can just like DM there and we'll get you that. So. Literally anywhere you can find us, mm -hmm. and we would be happy to chat with you and invite you and welcome you on the journey of Rooted. Mm. So, thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. Really appreciate you. Yeah. Yeah, we. Yeah, just an answer to prayer, like Lindsay said, um, and just grateful for uh, grateful for leadership uh, at that uh, next generation. Excited to see that happening. So. Um, that is number three in the center column. And then I actually want to jump uh, all the way over. The next thing I want to share about is another person I want to invite up here is in the bridges and tables at our facility, the last column, the right column there. Um, number two, build a new south side food bank with better storage, distribution, and community meeting space. Include temporary housing on the top floor for missionaries and members of our community. Um, so what this is is just to the... Uh, east of our building, the modular and the, uh, the existing Southside Food Bank house, um, those need to be replaced, especially the modular. We just want it, to it put it out of its misery. And so, um, <laughs> and so uh, we've been talking about what can we do there? And what this does is it raises a couple questions because um, there's just like the physical aspect, like what can we build there? What would work to build there? Um, but then there's this uh, question that runs concurrent to that. What uh, what current ministry initiatives need to be able to run out of that space and what new ministry initiatives 
could we, uh, could we set up to run out of that space? And so we've talked about how could this be a community resource center that serves the existing ministries of Hillcrest Kids and the Southside Food Bank, but also expands new opportunities uh, to reach our wider community to build bridges and set tables. And we said, hey, those are really big questions. How can we even begin answering those? And then we brought on our friend Ben Browder. There you are, Ben. Come on up here. We said, you know what, Ben? Um, could, you, could you be kind of a consultant for us for a year and ex explore those questions? And Ben's going to talk about how he's doing that. Thanks, Tim. Yeah. I'm so tempted to play with this right now, but I'll try <laughs> not to. Um, but yes, for, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ben. I've actually been sent out my family over the last years to serve families over in Europe. And now we're back here in Whatcom County, and that's still our passion. And now I get to be in this role where we're scoping out what it looks like to create a family resource center. And it's not just me. There's a committee. There's an advisory committee that's to trying to answer these really hard questions. You know, what should this look like? And um, there's some really practical elements to that. And the first one is what can be built here, like Tim said. You know, what size, where, there's some things that need to be navigated. And so we'll spend some time working on that. And the other question is, what's needed? What does this community actually need? So we're not just creating things that seem good, but don't actually meet the real needs. And so questions have to be asked, listening has to happen, and so that's a huge part of this year, is trying to engage with the community. And then lastly, like Tim said, is who should be a part of this? Who are the partners? When we're building bridges in the community, who are the partners that make sense to bring along so that we, could, we can have this expression that really ministers to people and meets their needs. And so that's going to be a little bit of my role over this next year. Um, this is an incredibly exciting project. To be at a church that dreams this big and says, these walls are too thick, we want them to be thinner. I think that's an incredible thing. And so if you want to talk to me, um, this, this morning is really busy. So maybe some weeks <laughs> down the road or months down the road, I will be around. I'm not going anywhere. Come find me. Ask me questions. Um, I'd, be, I'd be happy to share with you. So thank you. Thanks, Ben. Really appreciate you. And there will be periodic updates over the next year, just as that continues to unfold and get fleshed out. Um, we will, uh, yeah, we'll keep the community informed on that. So um, that, I, this is just a quick whirlwind tour, I know, of our kind of shared direction, this five-year plan. But we do think it's important to check in now again and just give some orientation. Where are we at on these things? Um, and take this home, look at it, um, pray about it. We want you to be informed on where these initiatives are. So where, where, where do we land this thing? You know, I started this morning, and I, uh, you know, I asked the question, uh, what are you building? We gave, I gave a quick kind of tour of what we sense uh, God desiring to do here at Hillcrest Church. These are the things that we've sensed that we say, hey, we sense God moving us in these directions to build bridges and to set tables, uh, to nurture relationships with Jesus and his community for generations to come. And these are the practical ways we've been pursuing that. And I want to encourage us as a whole church family to be asking ourselves, what, do you, what, what are you building? What, what are you part of building? What are you contributing to building? I know one of the things here at Hillcrest, uh, we always have people who are with us who aren't yet sure where they're at with Jesus, who are still deciding, do I want to be a Christian? Do I want to be part of this Jesus thing? Do I want to be a follower of Jesus? And for those who are with us today that, in, that are at that place, I hope this has been an interesting kind of look under the hood of, of how churches think about accomplishing their mission. But I would encourage you, if you are in that place, if you're like, I don't know, who, I don't know if I trust this Jesus, I, wanna, I don't know if I want to follow this person, I would please ask yourself the question, what are you building? Because everybody's building something, or everybody's tearing other magnetile houses down, everybody's doing something with their life. Our world is better when people can answer the question, I know what God has called me to build and to be part of. I know what God is building with my life, and I am participating with him. Reflect on that. 
And for those of us who call uh, Hillcrest Church our home, who say, I am in with Jesus, and whether I'm running or stumbling, this is the direction I desire to be going, I would just encourage you to, to consider, I know God is building things, like in your individual life, there's things that God has called you to build with your individual life. And we celebrate that. And I'd also encourage you just to think about how are you part of what we are building together as a church family? How does that fit for you? I encourage you to take this home. Where did I put my trifold? There it is. Take it home, pray about it, be informed about it. If there's things on there that don't have checks yet, and you're like, I want to be part of that. I want to see that happen. Come talk to us. We'd love to see how you could be part of that. We, we, don't, we don't believe that this is a kind of paid staff do it. We believe this is a community does it together. And so where are the places that you feel passionate about? The other thing, uh, we, all, we also have kind of a real practical just uh, next step uh, flowing out today um, that I want to let you know about. We thought it would be good, you know, as we talk about where we're headed, where our direction is headed. Um, a lot of times in the fall, we like to do a little kind of like health check moment. And so we've got this uh, 2023 uh, kind of health check survey that we'd encourage everybody to do. You actually uh, received an email about it this morning. Well, that is, if you've ever given us your email, you received an email. Some of us are like, I like to fly off the radar. I know, I know who you are. That's okay. Um, but uh, this is a health check survey. We just think, you know, when we're talking about, hey, the direction that we're building in, the direction that we're running in, it's good to check in. Are we... How's our blueprint going? Like, are, are the walls straight? How's the spiritual health around here? And so this survey will do that. Um, the other thing the survey does is at the end of it, we've got some custom questions on there that allow us to kind of, there are places that you can be involved in this kind of stuff. Um, so there's going to be some custom questions about where you're serving outside of Hillcrest. We think, we think yes, there's, there's ways that we build bridges and set tables as Hillcrest, and there's ways that you all build bridges and set tables as individuals in all sorts of ways. We want to kind of get our pulse on that. So there's some questions about where you serve. There's some vocational questions. There's some questions about if you want to serve here at Hillcrest or get plugged into a small group. Some places about getting plugged in. And so um, if you could sometime uh, today or this week, take 15 minutes, uh, fill that out. Um, we just think this would be good as we're talking about this shared direction, a good way to check in. Kind of make sure we're moving in the right direction. See if there's minor course corrections. Invite people to get plugged in as well. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah good. All right. Well, um, let me invite the worship team back up here, and let me end in prayer. Hillcrest, um, this is a different kind of Sunday. You know, uh, I love just taking 30 minutes and just unpacking Scripture. And so it's a little different. It's a little, you know, you've heard of all these small groups. you heard about all these different things. But this is, you know, I believe, uh, we believe that the, the communal life of following Jesus, like it's got to, the rubber has to hit the road. We can't, it can't just be all ideas. These things have to be lived out. They have to be lived out in our personal lives. They have to be lived out in our families, with our housemates. They have to be lived out in a church. And it's important in the life of a church to sit down and to have ki these kind of kitchen table talks. What's happening? Where are we going? How are we doing? And so we, we just see this as, as a vital part of real Christian community together. And so i um, glad to be on this journey with you, glad to be sharing this stuff with you, and grateful for what God is building in his world. Let's pray. Jesus, uh, I just want to, you know, on behalf of Hillcrest Church, Jesus, we want to set these plans. Um, even I just want to hold this, Lord, we, we want to hold this before you, and we just want to hold it lightly because our, our heart really is uh, that we believe you are building, uh, we believe you are building your temple, your, your temple people in this world to put your heart on display, uh, to invite people to encounter you, to do your works of beauty and justice and generosity. Jesus, we want to be part of that. We see you doing that in us and among us. Jesus, these things that we've talked about today are ways that, that we think we're, per, we're cooperating with you and participating with you. But, Lord, if there's places we're wrong, we need to change direction, Lord, would you show us? And, Lord, those things that you are like, that is exactly what I'm doing. Would you just give it your, your Holy Spirit energy behind it? We lay down uh, our plans uh, at your feet, Lord, and ask for you, your kingdom to come and your will to be done. Help us walk with you faithfully.
in your name. Amen. Thanks for listening. For more info, visit hcbellingham.com and join us any Sunday, 9 and 11 a.m.